In this video, I put together 10 awesome projects that I think you would love to make while we're setting all in and want to create. I figured everyone is needing a little bit of inspiration right now, so I compacted 10 of my favorite DIY farmhouse projects that I think you're gonna love. The first project I'm working on is going to be making over this planner. Yes, these are farmhouse looking and they are really cute, but after you already purchase one and you're using it in your home, it's fun um, if you want to purchase more to go ahead and make over um, the other one. So if you have multiple of the same container like this in your home, they all look different and they're not just all the same. So I wanted to cover up that flowers sign because like I say, that is written on several of my Dollar Tree planners in my home. So I'm covering that up with some white chalk paint and then just to give it a little bit of extra detail I took some silver lining color chalk paint and gonna kind of make a stripe at the top and the bottom I just freehanded this because I wasn't worried about it being perfect so I go all the way around but um, feel free to use painters tape if you are wanting more of a straight line I wanted to put a windmill on this little planner and I thought it would be really cute if the windmill could act as an O. So the only word that I could really think of uh, doing this was joy and uh, sometimes it makes you think of Christmas, but this is definitely a word that you can use all year, um, especially right now, putting joy on things because you can always be joyful and happy all year long. So I just free handed a windmill on here. I know that Dollar General sells uh, tiny little fairy windmills and that would be really cool um, whenever we can get back out if we could purchase one of those and just kind of uh, take the windmill piece off of that and you could glue that on there but I was completely fine with just free handing it on there it isn't perfect but I went with a pencil first so that I could try to get it um, as close to a windmill as possible so then I'm just using my Dollar Tree poster stickers to add the J and the Y to spell joy and then just sticking a plant that I've already had for a while in there to give this a complete makeover This next project will be so fun to make and display while the weather is getting warmer and the flowers are starting to bloom, but definitely something that you could display all year. So I'm using a couple of these terracotta pots. They come in a two pack from Dollar Tree and I'm going to give them a couple coats of the white Waverly paint. Uh, once again, I just love chalk paint because I feel like you get more coverage, it dries faster, and it's really easy to stress. I wanted this to look a little bit older and more weathered and distressed. So uh, once again, I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just took a small little paintbrush and kind of put some of this dark gray elephant color around the top and uh, middle ring of this terracotta pot. And then what was left over on the brush, I just kind of brushed it around the pot. So it did look like it had um, some weathered spots on it. And then Dollar Tree has this little pack of uh, flowers. They're just thin little wood pieces and they are perfect to DIY with. I wanted um, them to have some of these music notes. I think that is really pretty with the farmhouse look. I went ahead and traced these on the back and then I'm going to make some DIY Mod Podge um, because I didn't have any on hand at this moment but I cut these out and then to make the Mod Podge I just did one part glue of school glue and then one part water mix that together and then I can glue the paper on top of the flower and then put a layer over the top to give it a nice finish. If you didn't have this musical paper because we are staying at home you can definitely just use a page of an old book that has a lot of text on it to get the same look. After filling these terracotta pots with some styrofoam, I glued a small little dowel rod to the back of this flower so I could stick them down into the center. And then using some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon, I tied a piece just in a knot and then kind of shaped the ends to look like leaves. And 
and then using Spanish moss to cover the green foam I go ahead and stuff that in there you can add some hot glue to tack it down and then using a circle sponge brush I just uh, painted some white circles in the center and then used uh, what was left over of my gray paint and kind of give it a little bit of detail in the center just to make it pop out a little bit more so these are a super simple craft that you can make to add that pop of spring slash summer into your home and they make a beautiful shelf setter Next up, I'm going to share with you how to make these really nice looking candle holders, um, taller candle holders at that, so on a very cheap budget. Um, before you get discouraged and think this is another just Dollar Tree uh, junky little candle stand, these actually turned out really nice looking and they were super popular on my channel, so I thought that um, if you missed it that you would really enjoy these. I personally want to make another set of these, maybe in like an eggshell color. I think that would be beautiful for spring, but I ended up using five of the glass candlesticks from Dollar Tree and then two of these candle plates. I painted them all with white chalk paint. You could definitely feel free to spray paint these if you're looking for an easier route. And then I just glued um, the two together and then glued it to one of the candle plates and then did the same thing for the second one except just made it a little bit taller. Uh, gluing whenever I got to the top third little candlestick, I glued the bottoms together. And um, I used a combination of hot glue and E6000 so I can get that temporary hold and then the long lasting hold and the glues work together to make it stay really nice and in place until they dry and then I think what really sets this off is distressing this it makes it really look um, like a farmhouse piece whenever you take some of that uh, paint off of the corners and even though it's the glass showing through it's like a darker uh, color and it just looks really nice and high-end and then I just added some little jar candles but feel free to add some larger pillar candles um, as well as the green to get that nice high-end look. Next up is another project that is perfect to make this time of year. We're all looking to make DIY decor that could set out on our patio. I picked up a couple of these wooden flowers. These are a large size uh, from Dollar Tree and then painted them with this gorgeous agave color. Um, I love this blue color outside and adding pops of colors because it just really warms the space up showing that that pop of color especially this time of year so I painted one of them blue and then I'm going to paint one of them white and then for the circle inserts I picked up a per pack of these circles from Walmart and I'm going to go ahead and make them opposite uh, center colors so I needed one circle blue and then like I say I went ahead and colored um, one of the flowers white as well as another circle When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around. I wanted to give these a little bit more detail and make the colors pop, so I needed a little bit of distressing around the edges, especially for the white one because, as you can tell, it kind of is getting lost in, um, obviously I have a white background, which I try to never do that anymore and make sure that I'm doing it on brown craft paper if it's a white project, but I'm taking this gray and kind of dabbing off my brush and going around the, the edges, and I just think it gives it more of a beautiful weathered look, and um, these, uh, if you do put these outside, I would make sure that they are covered and not in direct sunlight because that can melt our hot glue and then uh, the rain can also make the wood bubble up and ruin the, the project. I painted a couple of the large dowel rods just with some neutral colors. I used a beige and gray color kind of mixed in and then um, using some nautical rope. I just thought this would give it a little bit of extra detail so I glued this around the center of the flowers and trimmed these down and then glued these from the back side. to hang around. 
if you do live in an area where it is going to get really hot, you might uh, could substitute the hot glue for something more durable like liquid nails. And then to uh, make these be able to stand up on their own, you definitely could just uh, put these down in a flower pot that you already own. But I picked up a couple of these little galvanized pots from Dollar Tree. I cut a piece of styrofoam to glue down in the bottom and then stuck my dowel rod in the center of that. I wanted my flowers to stand up at different heights so just remember that whenever you're gluing it on um, your dowel rods on the bag so I glued one a little bit taller up the flower and then one not so much so it would stand up a little taller and then to make sure that these aren't going anywhere I filled them up with some gravel rocks and then covered that up with some Spanish moss. But I think this set of little two flowers look so adorable setting out on a patio or a back deck and adds a perfect pop for spring. The next project is another one that was really popular with you all and I really enjoyed all of you all that shared this on Instagram. Um, if you uh, tag Crafts by Caitlin or hashtag Crafts by Caitlin, it pops up in my feed and I'm able to see it and share it with my followers. But um, I made this little spring sign, like I say, can also be used all year, um, all of these projects, but um, it just has this uh, little picket looking fence in the background so that's kind of what it makes me remind me of spring so much. But for the sign I just used a Dollar Tree Square sign and I painted it with with elephant dark color gray paint and then painted some large popsicle sticks I picked these up from Walmart with some neutral beige color and um, in the mineral color chalk paint and then I just hot glued these down if you wanted this to look more realistic you could even cut the uh, top of this to make it look more like a picket fence but I think I was getting the same effect um, with less work just doing this and sometimes whenever you cut popsicle sticks they do crack or break easy so I didn't want to mess them up I replaced the jute string hanging and then using one of these little organizing baskets from Dollar Tree, I just added a ton of hot glue uh, to the inside of this to make sure it would hold so I would be able to put some flowers in there. After stuffing my little basket with some Spanish moss, I'm using some of these spring flowers from last year, so you can definitely use what you have on hand. I think uh, some white or pink flowers would also look pretty in here, but I just uh, kind of rearranged them uh, down in there until I liked how they looked. And then I'm going to add a white little home sign that I picked up from Walmart. It was a little bit more pricey than buying it from Dollar Tree, but I think um, whenever you can go for high quality whenever you can, it does make a project look so much nicer. that's how simple it was to put this together but it also looks like a high quality piece uh, you definitely could trade out the flowers or hand paint the word at the top but I think it turned out so adorable and perfect uh, pop of color to add into your home For the next project, I'm using three of these square Dollar Tree frames. I think this is a great way and a great inexpensive way that you can write a word across these frames that makes like a larger decor piece rather than just putting something in a small frame. So I start by um, removing everything that's inside these frames and then I'm going to kind of dry brush over them with some mineral color which is like a beige color paint. I started by removing the uh, little 3D pieces on the back of these signs and sanded that down to make sure it was nice and flat so that I could paint over this. I give it uh, a nice thick coat of white paint and then I'm going to do some faux uh, wood on there and kind of make it look like distressed wood. You definitely could just use scrapbooking paper if you had like a shiplap wood or even go with like a plain white with just um, sharpie marker. That would be really pretty. I just wanted more of a gray look so I'm using my ruler to make even little planks of faux wood and then I go over that with some elephant color paint down the lines and then distress a little bit by dry brushing that same color in the center.
to lighten those lines up and give it a lighter look and some texture uh, I used a piece of sandpaper over that and I showed you the difference what it looked like before sanding and then afterwards and then I uh, just printed off the letters EAT for EAT. I picked these up at Walmart a while back, these little wooden letters, so you definitely could opt for that. But I didn't have uh, the full set that I needed right now, so I stacked this uh, printer paper on top of a thicker cardstock and I used the letter as a pattern. So just cut over that and then I was left uh, with the nice cardstock piece. And then I wanted that pop of blue color because I have little accent colors of this blue color in my kitchen and I uh, just painted that paper. It is uh, just going to be Mod Podged on so I didn't care that it was just thin paper. So I tried to put a little bit underneath and then cover the entire thing with Mod Podge. Whenever I took these apart, these little uh, sticks fell out of the frame that kind of hold the backing in the back so it has a little space in between the letter and the glass. So I replaced those and then pushed back the backing down in there and that was how easy it was to complete these. But like I say, you could definitely replace that faux wood in the background with just a piece of scrapbook paper to even make it more simple. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I enjoy videos like this because I'm giving you a little bit of everything, kitchen science, bathroom science, decor for outside, spring decor, a little bit of everything. So a one-stop shop. Um, the next thing I'm going to be making is a bathroom sign. Now Dollar Tree had these signs a while back, but someone told me that they have come out with a newer version. So keep an eye out for those online uh, because I think it's worth to order these uh, in bulk whenever they have these nice wooden signs. So I'm going to keep my eye out for that, um, but I will be excited whenever we can get back in the store and because it was kind of a fun game seeing what Dollar Tree had and something that you looked forward to every other week or every week or however often you go. That is something else. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below how often that you went to Dollar Tree because it, it does make a huge difference just not even going uh, to see in the stores and see what they have. So uh, to make the sign, I glued all three little signs together, or these are larger nice signs, and then I painted them with white chalk paint, distressed these, and then I'm making this a bathroom sign, so I painted some of Dollar Tree's wooden letters black that says hot baths, and uh, go ahead and hot glue those down. I wanted an old tiny bathtub on there and I, I didn't have a sticker or anything. You could definitely just print one off a silhouette and Mod Podge it, but I wanted this to be nice quality and wanted to paint this. So I'm just sketching this out by looking at a Pinterest photo of a silhouette and uh, then just filling this in black. So it's nothing that you can even really mess up whenever you are just painting a black silhouette piece. So I fill that in with my chalk paint and then I wanted it to say 25 cents on the tub. So using some more of Dollar Tree's wooden uh, words or numbers, um, I ended up painting those white and gluing those over the top of there. But just decorating with this by a faux plant and some little washcloths and greenery, I think this is an adorable little piece to put in a bathroom. The next project I'm going to be making is using a rope heart and I thought it turned out adorable. This sign would be beautiful for a bedroom or even for like a little girl's room. But I took one of these uh, Valentine signs that I had left over and painted the back white because I do want that faux wood look. And uh, I tried not to paint this perfect so I wouldn't have to do a ton of sanding. So just lightly hit the edges of this.
By using a coarse sandpaper though, I love the texture that it adds in the paint and uh, makes the brown from the sign pop up. So I wanted to glue the nautical rope in the shape of a heart, so I knew I needed to sketch out a heart design so that I could try to get it as straight as possible. So I'm just kind of playing around freehanding until I got the shape of the heart that I really liked. And I wanted this to be 100% symmetrical uh, as much as I could, so I ended up cutting that piece out, folding it over, and then going ahead and cutting that out so it is going to be like I say symmetrical. If you thought that the heart looked too girly or too much like Valentine's or something like that, you definitely could just make it a circle so it kind of would look like a little rope wreath at the top and then put some florals at the bottom. That would also be adorable, but um, I have a lot of little girls and I know even whenever I get tired of using hearts in my Valentine's decor or spring decor, anything like that, they love anything new to decorate in their little rooms, so it definitely will get its use. And I have learned that if you take the lighter and you kind of go over the rope very carefully, it does singe off all of the little hairs and make it look like a nicer piece and not have so much of the strings hanging off of there. I'm using one of Dollar Tree's uh, Metal Words in the Love and then adding some little uh, florals to the side. I thought that was really cute rather than covering up the top center of the heart. I think this would also be a really pretty piece to make for like a wedding if you wanted to put it by like where you put the cards or write a little message inside the heart that would be really cute but I go ahead and hot glue the word down at the bottom and then replace the jute string hanger to finish up this adorable little project and you definitely could customize this to fit your decor needs or like I say make this for a little girl's room you could even make the backing pink but I think it is an adorable easy little sign to make for uh, one of the Dollar Tree dollar signs. So this is another really popular uh, project on my channel. This is a perfect project for like a rainy day or us just setting in all the time, uh, especially if you didn't get to get one of the new Dollar Tree metal windmills that's on a stake or a little chain. But to make uh, your own DIY windmill, I'm using some of these wooden skewers and wooden dowel rods, as well as one of the little uh, plasticky uh, placemats from Dollar Tree and uh, a milk lid. So just save a milk lid from a milk jug that you are not using anymore. But uh, I needed to freehand out my little wind, uh, windmill blades, so I just measured them out. I uh, just did about two and a half or two and a fourth inches um, for the largest part of the blade. And then I kind of found the center and drew out about how long that I wanted it. And I did about three and a half inches long and then uh, about one and a half inches wide for the smaller part or one inch for the smaller part. And then I connected those and just try to get it as perfect as possible, although this is not exactly perfect. So then I was able to cut that out and use it as a pattern to cut out five more. After I had my windmill blades all cut out, I'm using some of these thin little skewers. I think these come from Dollar General, but they're super thin and I just cut them down long enough so that I could stab some in the milk jug lid and then tape them on the back of the blade.
I was scared to add too much hot glue to the back of these plastic placemats because I didn't want it to curl up or lose its shape. So I added a piece of tape, which held it down really nicely, but I went ahead and just barely added little dabs of glue at the top and the bottom because I do want this to stay together. So then I did use the milk lid for the center, and then you do have to use a little bit of uh, pressure to pop to poke it through the milk jug, but you definitely could um, poke something like a nail or something first to make it a little bit easier. But I just did this on opposite sides at first, but then I did have to go back and kind of work it around so that my blades didn't look a little bit, uh, so that my blades didn't look crowded, but got them all in there evenly so that I could move on to the next step. Remember that the milk lid is also going to be very fragile to heat. You don't want it to warp or lose its shape. So I just tried to add little dabs of glue on the inside rather than just piling it full. So I wanted this windmill to have a stand. So using the dowel rods, I hot glued two of the larger ones together and then used um, a couple of the dowel rods and then some of the little skewer sticks to make the little X in the windmill so it looked more realistic. A lot of people messaged me and said that you could make this 3D and you definitely could add the third dowel rod in the back and get this to stand up on its own. I wanted my windmill to be gray, but I wanted it to have warmer brown tones to look a little bit more rusty, so it would go with all of my decor. I did a nice base paint of the silver lining, which is a light gray paint, and then dry brushed over some of the darker gray, and then after all of that was dry, like I say, added some of truffle brown color paint, and uh, kind of went along the edges to make it look rusty and weathered like a real windmill. And this is what it looks like all put together. Like I say, it's a little bit more work than most of my projects, but I think it's still worth it and gives it a beautiful windmill that is super inexpensive. And then moving on to the last project, I actually picked this sign up from Dollar General, but you definitely could opt for just a rectangular Dollar Tree sign or a real piece of wood if you have that on hand. But I love this sign because it actually had little shallow lines that were actually cut down, so it does look like real planks. It had a ton of glitter, so I had to uh, sand all that down and get rid of that. And then give this a nice coat of the mineral color beige paint. I'm making a little basket of flowers so I only painted the top that color and then for the bottom and the sign that goes sideways or the little wood piece I did truffle color and I think this adds the perfect little top to make it look like a basket. If it was upside down it also would look like the DIY scarecrow that I made. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you watched that video. And then taking some of this rope I uh, glued it to make it look like a handle and then I glued some of Dollar Tree's little floral down inside of it. I used some of the greenery from these beautiful spring flowers and then used some white flowers because I did want this to be neutral decor. Because I love to distress everything and sand it down, I sanded the corners to make everything pop up and give it some dimension, and I just loved how it turned out. I think this is a perfect spring slash summer project, but could also be a beautiful thing to put out for Easter.
I had so much fun putting together this video and kind of going down memory lane and seeing um, how my channel has evolved, how my videos have got better quality, and kind of how everything has changed. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you remember whenever I posted any of these videos or if you have made any of these projects. You'll also have to let me know which one of today's projects was your favorite. Um, I love them all, but I just remember how much fun it was putting together like the windmill and um, the little music note flowers and the bathroom signs I love a ton of these and they're just close to my heart because it was whenever my channel was newer and growing my channel and just you all sending your pictures of you making my projects and it's just special memories for me so thank you to all of my subscribers who have subscribed or give this video a big thumbs up or even left comments or shared photos um, I just appreciate all of you all but thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time happy crafting bye